Good afternoon YouTube, my name's uh, Rob Pollard. I thought I'd put this uh, quick video together to show, uh, I guess, one of my early landings on a carrier uh, with the F-18 in DCS World. Um, I found this really, really difficult to get the hang of, so hopefully I can provide some tips as to uh, how I did it, how I went about it. It's not the neatest landing in the world and I tried to follow case one procedures but it's not quite there yet so don't give me uh, rocks for that just yet. First thing I'm going to do is set the plane up and what I'm doing now is setting up the TACAN channel for the uh, uh, carrier. Now for this scenario I set the TACAN on the uh, uh, carrier to uh, 42x. Now uh, what the TACAN does it shows you on the display where the carrier is but also more importantly you can put in a bearing fix now there are two ways of doing the bearing fix, you can either keep pressing the uh, course uh, knob which takes ages or alternatively you can do what I'm doing here and enter the course directly into the, uh, the front uh, numeric keypad. So there I've just entered the course of uh, 310 uh, which, or oh, 308 which uh, approxim approximates to the um, direction that the uh, carrier is heading in so I know how to intercept the carrier from here. Um, other things I'm doing now is setting up uh, things like a comm channel to the carrier and also the ICLS system, which is the ILS system. Now, I know most pilots use uh, ICLS uh, normally for case 3 and poor weather, but for uh, noobs uh, like me, the uh, uh, ICLS is really handy because it gives you a really good indication of where you should be at any uh, one point of time uh, during the final approach. So other things I'm doing setting up things like uh, uh, a radar altimeter, so you need that rather than the uh, barometric altimeter. Also setting off uh, the uh, uh, minimum height uh, warning, I think it's about 370 feet. Uh, turn off anti-skids because you don't want that for the carrier. And I think we're about ready to go. Flaps uh, down and it will take off. Now uh, this is uh, filmed in the Gulf map. Um, um, I'm somewhere in Dubai and um, I'm going to take the plane up off the ground, uh, fly a little bit over Dubai uh, and then fly directly to the carrier to perform a case one-ish landing. Uh, like I say, I'm very new to this. I still struggle uh, with getting the plane on speed and on angle attack, uh, as you'll see. Uh, but I'll, I'll certainly, um, I guess, tell you some of the uh, things I've learnt about the F-18 Hornet with regards to that, because there are uh, a few little handy things that are nice to know. So now what we're going to do now, we're going to fly uh, uh, broadly to the coast and then we'll hang a left turn and I'll intercept the Takan path. Now because I've set the um, uh, the radial so that it's in the direction the ship is travelling, it means that when I follow the radial I should end up flying right behind the ship, almost as if I'm going to land. Uh, but in a case one landing, you don't land straight away, you kind of perform a circuit around the ship. Uh, and the idea being that you can have a look at the uh, aircraft carrier, make sure the deck isn't fouled, uh, and basically get your aircraft in the correct uh, configuration to perform the landing, uh, which is what we're going to be doing now. Now, I'm kind of in my first week of flying the F-18, uh, so like I say, it isn't the best landing you see on the internet, and if you want to see good landings and have a, a more technical in-depth explanation on how to perform carrier landings, I highly recommend Jabbers, uh, J-A-B-B-E-R-S. He, he makes an uh, excellent tutor, he's on YouTube and he does a superb uh, Case 1 uh, F-18 Hornet landing video uh, and i definitely make a beeline for that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's very important to set your nav aids. Uh, uh, for a start, without the TACAN, you're going to have troubles finding the carrier. But you also want to set up in the mission editor, you, you want the TACAN to also uh, transmit uh, DME, that's distance information as well. And there's a checkbox you can just sort out for that. So the idea is we'll use the. Uh, <laughs> after I stop browsing the uh, Dubai City, you use the left hand MFD, in this case the HSI, and we're going to be using that to uh, determine our position uh, from the carrier, uh, with that uh, horizontal line you're seeing there being the flight path that I need to take to get there. And there was a uh, Dubai International Airport. Now in real life I probably get a lot of rocks for flying like this because it's right in the way of uh, the approach to that airport, but this is a simulation so who cares. The, the Dubai map, by the way, 
worth every penny and uh, right now D DCS are on a sale and I think they have a sale every summer so it, it is worth uh, investing in, in some of these sceneries but yeah having a, a right blast now in terms of carrier configuration you need around 30 knots over the bow uh, in order to perform any kind of successful landing so um, in this case I've set up 15 knot winds and I've set the carrier up to um, drive at 15 knots through the sea into the wind that's to give me my uh, 30 knots of airspeed and that bit's important. Another important thing that you need to check out is uh, your aircraft weight. You need to be at 33,000 pounds or less. If you're any heavier you're going to have big problems landing uh, and if you are heavy I suggest you either ditch your ordnance or there's a switch on the left of the cockpit where you can actually dip some of your fuel uh, uh, to lighten the load but you definitely want to be below 33,000 pounds so here we are we're flying up towards the uh, radio now and pretty soon we should be breaking to the uh, right uh, towards the carrier so this scenery is absolutely stunning level of detail especially considering this is a military sim and not a, a civilian flight simulator and I say right now uh, as a pilot I'm concentrating on that left hand display looking at the uh, the Takan line and once we're almost there you want to turn before you get to the line otherwise you overshoot so here we go we're making the turn now I love watching the wings in the F-18 in F-18 oh, sorry in uh, DCS you can see them flex under load uh, I don't know one day it's going to get me to crash or be so intense on watching those wings whizzing around that uh, yeah <laughs> it's not going to do me any good right so we're flying a, a little bit further towards Takana I haven't uh, gone completely parallel with it yet because I want to get nearer to it and it's easier to do it this way contacting the carrier now so let them know I'm coming in here we go Marshall 10 Mops 1, 2, 5, 4, 1, 3, Angels 1, 1, 5, State 5.4 Now uh, speaking of uh, radio comms, uh, wait for that to finish. Right, uh, radio comms are important mainly if you're doing a case 3 landing in either night time or uh, bad weather. Uh, because uh, the carrier won't turn its lights on unless you communicate with it so highly recommended here I'm just doing it out of courtesy but you, you don't really need to do that uh, particular step now ideally uh, when you come in for a case one pattern you, you want to try and come in at around 800 feet at about 350 knots now I'm a bit high and a bit fast right now uh, but you'll find that as I get near the carrier I'll start to try and bring the plane uh, within those parameters like I say I'm a completely new pilot and uh, uh, <laughs> to be honest I don't get anywhere near the uh, case one requirements uh, real uh, naval aviators and possibly other armchair pilots are probably laughing big time right now but bear in mind I haven't had long in the F-18 my, my previous flight simulator plane was the A-10 which is a completely different beast uh, now one of the things to note there's a few things that are different about carrier landings compared with uh, landings on the land uh, the first one is you don't fly the aircraft uh, you kind of fly it directly into the runway or carrier uh, without flaring it's almost like a, a controlled crash landing uh, the problem is if you try to flare the aircraft uh, you'll place your hook at the wrong angle and you'll probably have a bolter on your hands so that's the first thing uh, second thing is, especially on the carrier, always, 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 once you hit the deck, full throttle or, or, or full military power. Now there the radio is telling me that the uh, carrier is on a course of 308, while well, I know that anyway from the, uh, um, uh, the mission. So here we are overflying the fleet. Now with this mission I've, I've put the uh, escort ships at strategic points uh, to help me learn the case one pattern. So by overflying them I got a good idea that I'm kind of in the right place which is a very good visual aid to help you get your eye in. So here we are, we're looking down at the carrier making sure the deck isn't fouled and it isn't which is pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to try and get the plane uh, to within uh, case one 
parameters which is uh, around sort of 800 feet ish 350 dots now once you get about one and a half miles away although you can make it longer if you need more time uh, the thing to do drop your throttle down to zero and perform a, a left hand brake turn which I'm doing now and try to match the G's at 1% of your current speed so if you're doing 350 knots pull 3.5 G's now obviously as you turn with zero throttle your speed will drop so you need to uh, drop how many G's you're pulling on the um, a joystick now again as a noob I'm trying to do this we're not doing a very good job now I know that the um, escort ship uh, one of the escort ships is exactly at 1.2 miles away now here I am I've got to a speed of 250 knots and the first thing I'm doing uh, landing gear down flaps down hook down the number of times I've forgotten to put the hook down and ended up with a bolter so always remember the hook now this is the part I have problems with uh, as soon as you transition to trying to get the plane on an AOA you generally find that the flight path marker and the E brackets start flying upwards which is the right pain so what I tend to do, I, I use the um, joystick to force the flight path marker out to be almost level and wait for the speed to drop to around 140 knots. At that point I uh, release the joystick and then just use the trimmer, uh, the elevation trim, to move the flight path marker into the E-bracket which you can see there. So it's almost centre and we're on uh, angle of attack. So my, my biggest problem is learning to keep angle attack, especially in a turn, I'm just not very good at it and that's something I'm learning. Now theoretically, you're supposed to be looking at the carrier and as soon as you see, um, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's the white rampy bit on the back, as soon as you've got visual on that, you perform a 30 degree turn, uh, which is what I'm doing now. Now on the HUD you can see uh, the ICLS uh, markings, they look like a cross, uh, it's a bit like ILS on a civilian aircraft. Like I say, they don't normally have that on for case one landings but as a, a newbie highly recommended because it shows you exactly where you need to be uh, so uh, it just helps with corrections in general now you see the sea is a little bit rough because we've got this 15 knot wind uh, the carrier is moving as well so we need to take that into account uh, it's starting to uh, roll off now. now everything from here on in happens pretty damn quickly uh, now the key to this is to stay on angle of attack, i.e. on speed, i.e. where you're seeing that uh, orange circle on the left of the HUD and your flight path marker is in the E bracket because if you're not on um, angle of attack your hook won't catch uh, and when you're flying the plane in this configuration if you want to move the plane up or down you use the throttle only, you don't touch um, your, your actual joystick which is a very hard thing to do now the other thing I find as well with the uh, DCS F18, I've actually seen real Hornet drivers do this as well, is you'll never find the right throttle setting to get on angle of attack. You have to keep moving it backwards and forwards rapidly, so you end up oscillating your throttle continuously around a point to stay on AOA. Uh, and that's a very important point because you'll never find that sweet spot. So in this case, as soon as you see the mark, flight path marker start to dip, add throttle, as soon as you see it start to rise, drop throttle, and you're continually doing that. So here I'm making some last minute adjustments for the uh, final landing. I'm actually a bit high when I come in here. I'm having to force the nose down a bit so it's not the best of landings but bear in mind it's one of my early ones. At that point I had put, put full military power on because I was expecting a bolter and in fact you should always expect a bolter. If you land and don't bolt consider that a bonus and a surprise. So the hook goes up and then uh, we're going to head over to parking. Now with the F-18 nose wheel steering isn't sensitive enough so you need to activate the high fidelity nose wheel steering normally located at the base of your joystick in order to be able to make the tight turns you need on a ship and you can, you can see that in the HUD when that mode's engaged. So here we go to parking. I'm guessing you can fall off the ship so don't go racing around on the flight deck. There we go. And I'm, I'm now putting on the main brake so we don't go rolling around. Uh, next thing I'm going to do now is try and play with the wings. Uh, I always find it quite hard in VR to uh, press that button, but it does get there eventually. It seems to take a bit of time before the wings start to move. You should see them folding. Here we go. So the wings are now folding up and ready for stowage. 
I'm guessing in real life they probably have tractors to drag you around the deck and put you in the right place so you wouldn't have to do all this and uh, now we're going to open the canopy again this is quite hard to do in VR I, I don't use a mouse I actually use the centre of my uh, HMD and it's quite hard to look at certain buttons but anyway that's uh, my one of my early carrier landings don't judge me too harshly uh, uh, hopefully I'll get better at the time thank you for watching bye